So what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about why we would rejuvenate. What are the reasons why? You certainly have to have some goals and objectives. Look, at, talk a little bit about some of the options of rejuvenation that are out there for producers. We'll talk a little bit as well about some of the recent studies here at Western Beef Development Center and look at some of the outcomes of those research trials. So let's talk about mechanical solid disturbance as a rejuvenation option. What we're talking here is spiking using knives or rodeo rear harrows, usually one or two passes early in the spring prior to any pasture growth. And usually our objective here is to disturb that top two to four inches of the soil profile. If there is a rough surface afterwards, you may have to go out there and float it afterwards. From the data that we've seen historically here in Saskatchewan using a mechanical soil disturbance, there is some numeric increase in yield, but certainly you're going to realize that there is a seed bank laying there and possibly this mechanical disturbance will liberate those seeds and you might have a weed problem that year following mechanical disturbance. As I mentioned, the equipment can obviously thin up the stand and leave that surface rough, so you might have to as well come in there and float that particular stand. And again, a mechanical disturbance is certainly very highly moisture dependent. So as I mentioned, the airway is one option of a mechanical disturbance for rejuvenation, but looking at some data from central Alberta, looking at four different sites where they applied either an airway in the fall, spring, or fall and spring program, as well as no airway mechanical disturbance, you can see that there's really no increase in biomass. So really there is no good response to using this type of mechanical application. The other options that are out there are using a cultivator shank, either a two inch chisel, or possibly a half inch anhydrous knife. Spiking is another mechanical disturbance that we can use for rejuvenating pastures. Here at Western Beef Development Centre, we looked at a small project that we did with four different treatments. Looking at the effect of using a mechanical disturbance like a spiking using a half inch anhydrous knife or spiking plus application of fertilizer. So the four treatments that we looked at were in terms of a check where there was nothing, nothing done to that particular pasture, no fertility applied, no mechanical disturbance, using a half inch spike by itself, using a spike plus 50 pounds of N or a spike plus 100 pounds of N. So looking at the increase in dry mass or biomass, we can see that the percent over the check uh, looking at the spike, we saw 145% of control in terms of dry matter yield. The spike plus 50 pounds of N, we saw 200% over the check. And that spike plus 100 pounds, we saw 289% over the check in terms of increased biomass or increased yield. We went out there with stalker cattle and grazed those particular pastures and we looked at the actual performance of these calves out there over those grazing days. And you can see the gains per acre on the right hand column where the control we saw 114 pounds gain per acre from those calves that were grazing that pasture with no rejuvenation treatment, 132 pounds for the spike and 135 pounds for the spike plus 50 and 114 for the spike plus 100. So really I guess you can summarize and look at what is the actual treatment that had the greatest impact. It would be in this particular instance spiking by itself or spiking plus 50 pounds of in. So let's talk about sod seeding as a rejuve option. Sod seeding is where you're directly drilling into that killed or suppressed sod. And I'm going to make a point here, in fact, if you're going to go out there and use sod seeding, you have to suppress that existing sod. If you don't suppress that sod, you're going to certainly probably not allow for good germination of those seed species that you're going to directly seed into there. So you do have to suppress that sod with either a glyphosate to allow or reduce that competition and allow those seedlings to germinate. You may need specialized equipment in this particular instance. And really, what is your objective here? Do you want to change those species in the problem soils? And as I mentioned, it's very moisture dependent as a lot of these rejuvenation treatments are. So this is a sod seeding trial that we did at Western Beef Development Center where we wanted to sod seed hazelnut fall rye into an old crested wheatgrass pasture. What was the management procedures we used here? Where we sawed seeded fall rye into an old crested wheatgrass pasture. 30 acres were sprayed using Roundup at 2 liters per acre on the 15th of June in 2009. After we killed that existing stand, we sawed seeded AC hazelnut fall rye on July 17th using the Agro Plow 8100 Agro Drill. Following that, we measured biomass, we measured forage quality, and we also measured animal grazing days. This slide just shows you the AC hazelnut fall rye roughly about five weeks after seeding. 
after six to eight weeks after you seed these types of annual pastures, you should get some good grazing. The forage protein on this was very high, very more greater than we anticipated, 19% crude protein. Energy levels were very high as well, 64, 65% TDN. Fiber levels included NDF at 44 or 45%, ADF at a roughly 27%. Calfos 0.34% for calcium and phosphorus at 0.5%. So a benefit of sod seeding into an old perennial stand is use of that annual pasture 68 weeks afterwards in a high quality forage as well. So additional results of this sod seeding annual pasture included nearly 2,000 pounds per acre of biomass or dry matter yield. We grazed that in the fall time leaving a residual amount of 466 pounds per acre so we're utilizing a little over 75% of the available forage. We grazed 234 cow-calf pairs for eight days, which worked out to 62 grazing days per acre. So when you put in an annual pasture like a fall rye, we look at probably some good grazing six to eight weeks after we seed it. We might come in with some additional grazing in the fall time, given some moisture or some rainfall following that first grazing event. And this actual annual pasture would work as a biennial, where we're gonna look at probably some spring grazing the following year. So let's talk briefly about overseeding as another rejuve option. If you're going to overseed, you're going to probably go out there and broadcast a legume. Generally, a legume is, is beneficial type forage because of the higher quality versus trying to go out there and overseed a grass species. So usually a legume is broadcast and we usually use a harrow pack or possibly a grazing event following that overseeding technique. You want to use normal seeding rates or possibly a little bit lower. Some of the options for legumes include sweet clover, alfalfa, red clover are probably the best options to go out there and try and overseed with. Really your objective here is to introduce a legume without going out and mechanically disturbing or using a fertility event. You don't want to apply any fertilizer because really that fertilizer, those nutrients would be also used by the existing sod and certainly a competition factor would be built in. A lot of producers use overseeding as an inexpensive option, but certainly there is that issue with competition from the existing stand. So a summary in terms of overseeding is that it can be a low cost method of establishing some type of legume in a low density combination in an existing grass stand, but generally you need to realize establishment is much less successful if that sod or that stand is quite dense or there's lots of competition for those new legume seedlings to establish and it doesn't necessarily equate into increased production in the year after seeding. As well, moisture is very dependent like all these rejuvenation options that we've been talking about today. Finally, we believe that grazing management should be the greatest rejuvenation technique. Proper grazing management is certainly an option in terms of not having that stand decline or not seeing signs of overgrazing or too much grazing or uh, setting up those particular species, those productive species to be invaded by increaser species. And it's a good way of controlling a source of pasture decline, uh, control utilization through proper stocking rates and livestock distribution and provide rest. Rest probably the most important thing a pasture needs during the active growing season for those plants to regain their vigor and to increase their carbohydrate reserves for the following growing season. This certainly, this rest period it's going to allow these plants to allow for greater energy reserves and greater root growth. This slide just shows you how overgrazing is certainly a negative impact on pasture and overgrazing does reduce profitability because of reduced biomass for those particular cattle to graze. So will rejuvenation benefit this particular pasture? Probably not a good option for fertility or sod seeding or overseeding. We're looking probably at a, at a break and reseed option here in this particular pasture. So to summarize, we just want to look at what kind of rejuvenation technique works for you on your ranch or your farm. What are your objectives? What are your goals? Do you want to increase yield? Do you want to change quality? Do you want to change existing botanical species that are out there? So you really have to have a goal in mind for whatever rejuvenation technique you choose. There's lots of information out there for you to look at on the websites of publications, hard copy publications, a couple of really good manuals include rejuvenation of tame forages for the parklands or the north part of Saskatchewan. Another one is called park rejuvenation of tame forages for southern Saskatchewan. Some of the websites that are out there include foragebeef.ca and of course our own website here at Western Beef Development Centre wbdc.sk.ca.